for infrastructure, this is one of the most funded uh, project or intervention. And the intervention is coming, the funding is coming from World Bank. It is being funded to a tune of 8.2 billion. So we are constructing 962 additional classrooms, 859 additional laboratories, 1,843 sanitation facilities. We are also constructing 63 uh, classrooms to benefit the SNE, class, the SNE schools. And also we are offering water and sanitation facilities in the 72 in total uh, SNE schools. We started with a needs assessment that was done in 3,000 primary schools and 1,437 uh, 1, uh, secondary schools. But when it came to allocation of funds, we were not able to allocate all of them. So the needs assessment helped us in ranking, in ranking and prioritizing the schools to benefit from the infrastructure. And that is why we, uh, I said earlier that we only have uh, 561 uh, secondary schools that are benefiting from uh, both classrooms and also in uh, the laboratories. So the criteria that was used to, uh, to, uh, to select the schools that were benefiting from infrastructure, one, there are schools that were, had been uh, uh, registered by 2015. These are schools that had an enrollment of 150 uh, and above, and these are schools that were overcrowded. We can say we are moderately satisfied because in some schools we have uh, the contractor has uh, really made some progress while in others we, find, we found that it's like he has uh, abandoned the sites. But we can say generally this has been observed, the implementation of the safeguards, but we can say that uh, as far as uh, insurance of the workers is concerned, that was an area that we had issues and also the registration as far as NCA is concerned. So implementation of safeguards are, are, are up to date they, the, the workers are protected, they have a WIBA insurance. What is only remaining is just uh, uh, registering the site. From the project, uh, one thing we expect that uh, we are going to have improved learning outcomes. We are going to have retention of our learners of primary schools, uh, particularly when we intervened, uh, we aimed at intervening in, with, in sanitation, provision of sanitation facilities in primary schools. We aimed at retaining our girls because we realize that their participation rate is low, which ends up in a low learning outcomes and dropping out of school. To select the counties or the sub-counties that are benefiting is because they have low retention levels and also they had high transition rates. So therefore, the infrastructure component and the other components, of course, the intervention such as the scholarship, Elimu scholarship program, all of them will go a long way in the supporting the country on the government in addressing the challenges that we've been having of high dropout rates in the upper primary and low retention rates when it comes to primary to secondary education. Attention, so the project is not ending in 2023 and 2024 and based on the performance of the project, we, we are hoping that the government will consider an additional financing because uh, the need for infrastructure is great the need for Elimu scholarship is also great. We, we are doing a project on infrastructure in three sub-counties out of a total of nine sub-counties in Moranga. So the main sub-counties that have benefited include the Moranga East sub-county, that is Keharo. We also have Kegumo sub-county and we have Kandara sub-county. So in terms of infrastructure, We've been able to benefit with uh, classrooms. We have a total of um, 34 classrooms that are being constructed in various uh, schools. Then we have 32 laboratories. And we also have uh, a special school that has benefited from this uh, circuit project. That is Moranga School for Hearing. They've been able to get a special laboratory, a special room, and also some other special rooms and sanitation, and also water. So beside, beside this one, and the other one, there's no